Directed by John McTiernan and starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, 1987's Predator is one of my absolute favourite movies of all time. It takes a fairly straightforward, simple idea and executes it masterfully, creating one of the most well-loved classic sci-fi action thrillers of all time. I don't quite remember the literal first time I ever watched it, as I was a young child at the time, probably not even 10 years old yet, but I do remember watching it multiple times on an old VHS that my parents had taped off the TV, complete with ad breaks and all the swearing and gore cut out, but even then I absolutely loved the film and probably watched it a dozen times, I thought it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. It wasn't until I bought it on DVD in the early 2000s that I even knew certain parts existed. Parts like the flayed bodies, Dylan getting his arm blown off, and Billy having his skull ripped out. The story follows an elite military unit led by Schwarzenegger's character Dutch, who are sent on an apparent rescue mission. After the mission is complete, we see they are being watched by something. The men then begin to be stalked and killed off by a mysterious extraterrestrial beast. The storyline is nice and simple and very streamlined. There's something I like about the first entries in these large, iconic movie and TV franchises, such as The Terminator, Jurassic Park, Alien, and Stranger Things Season 1, where they don't yet have all those extra layers in addition to the lore and story, they don't have all that extra baggage yet. The story they tell is a bit more lean and mean, a bit tighter, without such an abundance of extra characters and plot points yet. I find they are nice to go back to if you just want to chill out and watch something. They still tell a great story, but without you having to be so invested in them. The main cast consists of Dutch, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, the leader of the team. He is very strong, tough and skilled, but very believable and grounded in reality, while still being larger than life. While he is powerful, you never get the impression he's untouchable or superhuman, which is pretty rare for one of Arnold's roles. He's not just an unstoppable one-man killing machine, he actually feels human, and very cool and charismatic too. Then there's Dylan, who's an agent with the CIA. He is an old friend of Dutch's. You son of a bitch! And is the one giving them the mission and accompanying them. I really like his character as he goes through this redemption arc, where the others aren't too pleased about him being an outsider who's tagging along with them, and it turns out that his rescue mission was really just a cover story in order to get them in to do some wet work for the CIA. But later on, when the shit hits the fan, he begins to pull his weight and goes back to try and save one of the other soldiers. And then we start to get to Dutch's men. There's Billy, who's the tracker of the group and has a very keen sense of his surroundings. Early on, he's the one who scouts ahead and surveys the area for things like footprints and spent ammo casings. And then later, he's the first one to realise they are being observed by the Predator. Then there's Blaine, a tobacco-chewing Texan who carries a minigun for his weapon. Unfortunately, he's one of the first to get killed off, but it does add something to the story, because Mac is best friends with him, and then when Blaine is killed and Mac sees the Predator, he starts to go a bit loopy, which is where where his character starts to go. And then there's Hawkins, who is the radio operator. He's not quite as macho as the others and wears these big glasses. I don't know if those were the style at the time or if they gave him those on purpose to make him look a bit nerdy and like he's a bit greener than the other members. And he's also the first to die, but he's still very memorable. And then there's the last of the team, Poncho, who I'm not sure if it's just me, but I didn't find him to be quite as memorable as the others. He's still a fine character, but he doesn't really have that thing that makes him that unique like the others do. He does have a grenade launcher though, so that does make him still pretty badass. And finally, there's Anna. She is at the camp with the rebels, so I guess technically she's a baddie but they take her alive instead of killing her. I'm guessing because she's a woman, Dutch didn't kill her, but I think she was there mostly just to give a bit of exposition to the plot as she's a local and tells them some stuff about the Predator, like how he comes there when it's hot and that it's him who skins people and takes skulls and stuff like that. I'm not complaining though, and I still do like the character. There are a couple more characters like General Phillips and a couple more extras, but that's the main cast we follow through the bulk of the film. 
something about this movie that is actually pretty rare for me is that I actually like every character and there's not one I find boring, annoying or unnecessary. A lot of times, even in some of my favourite films, there's at least one character I don't like, but here I can say I, I like every single character. Even in some of my absolute favourite films and TV shows, there's usually a character or two I dislike, but here there's not a single one, they are all likeable in my book. Something I really like is how, back then, they seemed to be really good at making each character an individual. They would give each person a distinct look and personality, their own flavour, which a lot of movies nowadays don't seem to put as much effort into doing, and sometimes a lot of the characters just blend together, but here everyone feels like an individual. And then we have the creature design of the Predator, such a unique and awesome design created by Stan Winston. A lot of movies have had an alien in them before, but what sets the Predator apart is how he's not only monstrous, but he is intelligent, even more so than the humans, and more technologically advanced as well as stronger. The reason he's hunting the protagonist is that he's here to hunt not for food, not because he's crazy, but for fun to hunt them for sport and to collect their skulls to add to his collection back home. What I really like about the creature's design is how every detail feels thought out and organic and serves a purpose. We see he primarily moves around up in the trees, so his weapons are hands free and he has armour but not too much so he can still be manoeuvrable. And then he even has hair but it's different looking and alien and he even wears bits of bones from things he's killed. He is revealed slowly bit by bit, first we see through his point of view and he even sees in a different light spectrum to us making him more alien. Then we see him but he's camouflaged, then we see him through a few short glimpses but then he is wearing a mask so we can't see his face, and then only then in the final showdown do we then see his face, it's built up and then revealed so well. And then his face is one of the most unique and recognisable out there, and the special effects used still look better than anything even today over three decades later. The thing looks alive, and they've never managed to quite match it in any of the sequels. Even though it's designed to be a simple and fun action movie with lots of explosions and an alien in it, it's done so well that it ends up being so much more. It's perfectly paced and I always find what's happening either interesting, fun, tense or thrilling. I can say there is never a dull moment in this film and having just watched it again the day before writing this review, I can honestly say that I enjoy every single moment of the movie. Another rarity for me, as in probably every other one of my favourite movies, there's at least one part I find a bit boring, just one or two minutes I think to myself, come on hurry up and get to the next good bit. Even films like Terminator 1 and 2, Alien and Aliens, all have those couple of minutes in them for me, but Predator is the only film I can think of where I enjoy every single moment of every single scene, and taking that into account, that may make it my favourite film of all time. The way the story is told, the film follows the age old technique of show don't tell, which is almost a lost art these days. It treats the audience like adults and stuff's presented there for you to work out for yourself, like how the predator sees in infrared and how his camouflage cloak works. It shows you it working instead of having the characters spoon feed the audience and exclaiming out loud what's going on. I mean, he grew an exoskeleton under his fucking skin. It also has an amazing atmosphere and filmography. Within the first few minutes, you're totally immersed in what's happening, and from there, it only builds and builds and builds. It takes elements of multiple genres, action, thriller, sci-fi, and slasher, and blends them together perfectly. It starts off like an action movie when they fight the gorillas, but then when people start being killed by the predator, it becomes almost like a slasher horror, and then a sci-fi thriller, switching gears seamlessly and never feeling segmented or disjointed. It has one of the most iconic soundtracks out there too, which adds to the atmosphere perfectly. A lot of the sequels try to replicate it, but it never quite works like it does here, often feeling too forced. 
It uses humour towards the start, but as soon as it's time to get down to business, the characters act 100% serious. It's not like modern movies today, where they'll keep trying to add in quips and jokes even during what should be a scary and life-threatening situation. It's also a fairly gory movie, but it feels natural and is used when needed. It all fits with the story they're telling, and never feels over the top or just there for the sake of it. After re-watching it for this review, I also watched the special features which include a making of documentary with interviews with the cast and crew, and it looks like everyone involved had a lot of fun making this movie and were very dedicated to delivering a quality product and it certainly shows. So in closing, Predator is one of the absolute best thrillers ever made, and definitely ranks up there with films such as the first two Alien movies and the first two Terminator movies. I give it a perfect score of 10 out of 10, it's pure fun and entertainment and a timeless classic, even 35 years later we're still talking about it. Thanks for watching my review of Predator, if you enjoyed it then make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're interested in watching future uploads from me and I'll catch you next time.